GPAT 2018 question paper how the questions were appeared and what is the statistics of this 2018 paper GPAT 2018 statistics the total number of questions is 125 and what are the qualifying marks for general and OBC category it is around 137 and for persons with disabilities is 119 and for SC category it is around 98 and SD category it is around 67 if you see the qualifying marks whatever may be the category if you get marks above 137 you may be qualified in GPAT 2018 so 137 marks means how many questions so on average by dividing by 4 you will get 34.25 that means we have to attempt at least above 34.25 questions suppose you have attempted 50 questions out of that 40 questions are right and 10 questions are wrong so for each right answer you will get 4 marks so 40 into 4 you will get 160 and for each wrong answer you will get a minus 1 negative mark so 10 into minus 1 minus 10 so total marks you obtain is 150 that means you are already qualified you have marks above the qualifying marks and you are qualified so plan your preparation such that you are attempting the questions which are minimum required for the qualifying mark and try to control the negative marking negative marking is the main reason for getting a low score in the gpad so if you control the negative marks less than 10 or better less than 5 you will get a good score and good rank in the GPAT. How the questions were there in the GPAT 2018? So if you see from the pharmacology 22 questions and industrial pharmacy 16 questions and from physical pharmacy 15 questions that means the physical pharmacy is given more weightage in 2018 and organic chemistry 13 questions and cognacy 11 questions and analysis nine questions totally 86 questions are there from these six subjects similarly seven questions are there from biochemistry and six questions from the pathophysiology nowadays pathophysiology also getting more importance in the competitive point of view and five questions from the biopharmaceutics and four questions from the microbiology and three questions from the anatomy and physiology and again three questions from the calculations calculations are also giving very important score in the gpad so totally 28 questions are there from these subjects and finally some of the questions from the minor subjects from the biotech two questions and engineering two questions forensic two questions inorganic chemistry two questions dispensing pharmacy one and management one and medicinal chemistry one so totally 11 questions are appeared in 2018 from these subjects so what is the weightage of the marks so we can divide into high weightage medium weightage and low weightage so subjects like pharmacology suitics cognacy and pharmaceutical analysis and organic chemistry were given more weightage where Biochemistry, physical pharmacy, pathophysiology, and biochemistry are given medium weightage, and forensic, dispensing pharmacy, engineering, inorganic chemistry, medicinal chemistry, anatomy, and management were given low weightage. We cannot say that the weightage will be same in the next years because it is variable. But in the 2018, the question paper was given as the statistics discussed here. So 70 to 90 questions are of the high subjects and 20 to 30 questions from the medium subjects and 5 to 15 questions from the low subjects. So grade of the questions in GPAT 2018. The different grades of the questions in the GPAT 2018 can be divided into basic level, apply level and advanced level. Now let us see few of the questions from GPAT 2018 which were asked on the basic level. Which of the following is a shortest acting cholinesterase inhibitor enlisted below? Options are A. Neostigmine, B. Pyridostigmine, C. Atrophonium, 
and D. Physostigmine. So here Edrophonium is the shortest acting and cholinesterase which is a basic level question asked in the 2018. Histamine concentration is highest in A. Beta cells, B. Mast cells, C. Lymphocytes and D. Adipocytes. So simply mast cells are having releasing the histamine. Select the beta lactamase inhibitor A. Griseofalvin, B. Clavulanic acid, C. Sulfamethoxazole and D. Tetracycline. So, clavulanic acid is a beta lactamase inhibitor. Which of the following side effect of ACE inhibitor result from the inhibition of the bradykinin breakdown? A. Analgesia, B. Hyperglycemia, and C. Productive cough, and D. Dry cough. Dry cough is one of the common side effect of the ACE inhibitors because of inhibition of bradykinin breakdown. As the directory constant values increases, the polarity of the solvents. A. Decreases, B. Increases, C. Remains constant and D. Decreases and then remains constant. So simply the dielectric constant is a indicator of the polarity. As the dielectric constant increases, polarity increases. So B is the answer. Which equation is used to predict the stability of a drug product at room temperature from experiments at the accelerated temperature? A. Higuchi equation, B. The Arrhenius equation, C. Heilbrand equation and D. Higgs and Crowell equation. The simply Arrhenius equation is used to obtain the accelerated stability studies. In universal indicators, a pH of 7 is shown with A. Yellow color, B. Green color, C. Blue color and D. Pink color. So here the answer is green color corresponds to the pH of 7. In Jeldal method, sample containing nitrogen is digested with A. Concentrated sodium hydroxide B. Fuming nitric acid C. Concentrated sulfuric acid and D. Strong ammonia solution So simply the answer is Concentrated sulfuric acid The unit of specific absorbance A. 1% 1 cm is A. Microgram per ml B. Mg per liter and D. Liter mole inverse centimeter inverse and D. DL gram inverse centimeter inverse and it is simply deciliter gram inverse centimeter inverse. Anthracene is isomeric with A. Phenanthrene, B. Naphthalene, C. Benzene and D. Azulene. Anthracene is isomeric with phenanthrene. The molecular form of the phenanthrene is A. C14H10, B. C12H10. C, C14H14 and D, C14H18. So simply it is C14H10. Galactose and glucose are A, epimers, B, enomers, C, isomers, D, ketose, aldose, isomers. So answer is glucose and galactose are epimers. So A is the answer. The hexose monophosphate pathway produces distinctly two useful products. Identify these products with the ratio in which they are produced. A. 1 NADPH to 2 ribose 6 phosphate. 2 NADPH to 1 ribose 5 phosphate. 2 NADPH to 1 ribulose 5 phosphate. And 2 NADPH to 1 fructose 6 phosphate. And if you know the HMP shunt pathway, you can easily identify that. 2 NADPH to 1 ribose 5 phosphate is going to be formed. So B is the answer. So in such a way, a basic level questions were asked in the 2018, which we have derived from the different subjects.